back we took samples from four different stone scapes and from the stone material, natural stone material which is around here. We wanted to compare the material from the stone scapes with the natural stones. And this is the conclusion that we got to. Out of 11 elements, 9 elements are the same between the stone spheres and the natural stone materials. The ratio, the percentage is pretty much the same. But there is a difference in two elements. The stone spheres have calcium carbonate, which as we know was used as the binding material. And plus they have element of mangan. Mangan even today it is used to enhance the hardness of the material. And our conclusion was that this, the stone spheres were made, they were put first in the liquid state, in the molds, that's how they got this perfect spherical shape, and then when they become solid, they were much stronger than surrounding material. Now, if they were made, now the question is why would they make so many stone spheres? What was their purpose? It seems that uh, the location of the stone spheres is always important. In the case of Costa Rica, that's the place which is known with the most um, uh, storms and rainy weathers in that part of the world. So it seems that with the storms, with the energy surges, it has something to do with the stone spheres, plus with the underground river flows and energy produced by underground rivers. So there is a connection between stone spheres and the energy. There is a new science called bioenergy, biogeometry. Biogeometry which tries to investigate the effects of different geometrical shapes to the surrounding area. And we know that two more powerful geometrical shapes are the shape of the pyramid and the sphere. So both of them have things to do with the energy. In the case of the, the Bosnian Valley of the Pyramid, we know that the Alp Pyramid does act as the energy amplifier using natural sources of energy. I don't know if uh, Ricardo had a chance to talk to you, and uh, I was not with you a week ago when you came and I apologize. But uh, what we have proved so far is that the Pyramid acts in some kind of the energy machine, it uh, gets the energy source, natural energy source. For example, in the core of our planet, we have magma. Magma creates magnetic energy. That's natural source, we know that. A pyramid with its shape gets this magnetic energy, amplifying several hundred times. With our colleagues from Russia, Professor Kavrashkin and Seplaku from the Schmidt Institute, <coughs> We've done some testing in Egypt and Bosnia and we measured the strength of the signal at the bottom of the pyramid and on the top of the pyramid. On the top it is 500 times stronger than at the bottom. Meaning that the pyramid with the shape, with the orientation to the north, east, west and south and with the material basically focuses all this energy coming to the top. The same thing happens with the underground water, you know, there are underground water streams under the Bosnian pyramid. The pyramid is getting, sucking that energy, amplifying it you know, several hundred times. So, that's the reason why the pyramids are considered today as a huge energy uh, machine. It seems that uh, you know, the pyramids are a big energy machine. And what we have here, the stone spheres in concentration, <coughs> they act as a, you know, mini power plant. Most probably that was the that was the purpose of the stone spheres. Of course, today they are not in the same position, on the actual you know, original position, so probably they do not work anymore. But then uh, some people, uh, you know, can see a certain sensation being on the top of those stone spheres or around. 